said before in our previous class that chametz equals ego. And that the reason why Moses' name is not in the Haggadah, which seems like such a terrible thing to do to our greatest prophet, not have his name in the Haggadah. Why is it Moses' name in the Haggadah? It's very simple. Passover is the holiday of centering on God. God took us out of Egypt, not Moses. So we want to show that the only thing that exists in the world is God. As great as Moshe is, and the greatness of Moshe is that he recognized that only God exists. And all the credit is due to who? God. The reason why it's so terrible to have chametz is because chametz is an inflated ego. It's self-centered. Oh, look at me, I'm so big. Matzah is a very nitty, gritty, small thing. So I want to tell you it's such a heartwarming story. Oh, I love this story. It's one of my all-time favorite stories. Because not only Moshe is humble, but every, any true Jewish leader and rabbi and prophet and chacham must have what? The great attributes of what? Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu. And what was his great characteristic? Humbleness. Humility. Humility. So, like I said before, one of the greatest, greatest rabbis in the Talmud, especially the Bnei Torah, know this, Rabbi Akiva Eger. All the Rosh Hashivas and a great, great, great Torah teachers, Magidei Shi'ur, Talmudic, Talmudic professors, so to speak, so everybody understands, they're obsessed with the very, very interesting questions, Rabbi Akiva Eger. Almost every page of Talmud has the Gilyon Ashas. So Rabbi Akiva Eger was one of the greatest, greatest Talmudic scholars of the last 500 years. And there's another also great rabbi. His name is Rabbi Yaakov Loberbrown. Lober, rabbi Yaakov Loberbrown, the most difficult part of Torah, you know that, this is very important to know. Unfortunately, like most Jews don't know this. The Jewish code of law has how many sections? The Shulchan Aruch. Written by Yos Rav Yosef Karo. Four parts. Orech Chaim, which is the laws of daily life. Then Yore De'a, which is the laws of kosher and the laws of the mitzvot. The daily mitzvot. Then the third part is Evan Ezer about marriage and God forbid divorce, ketubah. Then the fourth part, the most difficult part of Jewish law, the code of Jewish law, is the, shulcha, is the Choshen Mishpat. The civic law, the Jewish monetary, business law. And one of the most important um, commentaries to explain that is written by Rav Yaakov um, Loberbaum of Lisa. He's called the Netivot HaMishpat. So guess what? You know, may God always, all the Nazis burn in Jahannam forever. Amen. You know, Warsaw was really like the New York of Europe for Jews. It was just, you know, so um, thousands of Jews, it says over here in this story, tens of thousands of Jews came to greet these two great Torah scholars that were coming to visit the city of Warsaw, Rabbi Akiva Eger, and who? Rabbi Yaakov, the Nitivot HaMishpat, which is the great, great commentary on Jewish business, ethics, and law. So, the rabbis came in, they didn't have cars in that time, this is like in the 1800s, they came in a carriage, in a very nice carriage, so, all of a sudden, Rabbi Akiva Eger said, wow, tens of thousands of people, it's like, Lahavdil, so to speak, it's like the president is coming to the city of Warsaw, what are all these people coming for? He said, for sure they're coming from my colleague that's sitting next to me. So he got out. He got out of the... It was a big carriage. It was like a royal carriage. Like a limo carriage, so to speak. So Rabbi Akiva sneaked out. Rabbi Akiva Eger. And he went into the crowd to greet who? Rabbi Yaakov, Milisa. <laughs> and on the other side of this limo, uh, you know, carriage... Rabbi Yaakov Melissa said, wow, tens of thousands of people coming 
to greet, of course it's not for me, Rabbi Akiva is greater than me. So he got out of the carriage. So guess what happened? The president of the Jewish, you know, like the, the, the chief rabbi of, uh, <laughs> of uh, Warsaw comes to greet the two rabbis. He sees that the... <laughs> he sees that the... They thought it was hijacked. It's empty. Later, they, when they interviewed the rabbis, the rabbi said the honest truth. He said, listen, such honor and prestige, I don't deserve it. Who deserves it? The other person. So, in essence, the carriage may have been empty and they got a little bit frightened, the leaders. But it was full of what? Humility. And that's the hallmark of Jewish greatness. To always respect other people. Not always be obsessed with your narcissistic self. And may Hashem help us. We know, I just want to end off with this idea. We read in the Musaf of Yom Kippur, in the prayers of Yom Kippur, one of the main, main, main things that, God forbid, Mashiach doesn't come, that is holding Messiah back, it's holding him prisoner, that he can't come and save us, is you know what? And in our holy books it says, Ben David, the holy Mashiach, Messiah can't come until people become a little bit more modest and what? Humble. So, may Hashem help us to truly bite into the chametz with a lot of meditation and really make it the vitamin. When we, each bite, bite of matzah that we, we take, it should give us the energy and the holiness of what? Humility. To know ultimately God is the center of the world and not us. Amen.